At the 2018 New York Comic Con, I sat down with Scottish musicians Roddy Hart and Tommy Riley to talk about their work as composers on the upcoming Christmas zombie musical Anna and the Apocalypse, hitting theaters November 30th. You'll hear first from Tommy Riley. Now, obviously, this is your first full musical. So, how did you prepare to approach that? We didn't. We absolutely <laughs> didn't prepare in any way whatsoever. Uh, we just, yeah, what, what did we do? We sort of said, like, we'll take a week. We, we love the script. We want to do, as soon as we read the word zombie musical, we're like, we want to try this. It'd be, it'd be really fun. And the script, like, is 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 a, is a work of genius. So we're like, well, let's try and get some songs in, together and see if we can do it. Yeah. And so we were like, take a week, see how many, if we get one thing that yeah. we like, then we'll do it. And then or we'll try and convince them to let us do it. And then we just ended up right, well, like six or seven things. Yeah, week. it just, came like, together. Of ideas that just happened really fast because it's, 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 yeah, it's incredibly fun. quickly. And I think we knew we were onto something because we we just felt the script was so unique. And you know, it is a very strange sell. And everyone's reaction is the same when they first hear this this phrase "zombie musical." You, you just it, you don't know what to expect, but it intrigues you. And so you think I want, I want to know more about it, and and I think actually in terms of preparation, we, you know, we went at we came at the songs from a, a kind of uh, insulated kind of uh, perspective where we didn't listen to too much in terms of musicals because we felt we had been hired and brought into the fold for a reason, which was that we came from a different background. We weren't musical theatre guys. We wrote indie singer-songwriter, sometimes pop-type songs. Um, and I think that's what they wanted, to make it different. And so the preparation really happened as we were doing it, and the research began as we were doing it. And we didn't really know if like the... The, some of the musical conventions at the stage show would work in this film because it's, it's, it's such a mad film so much going on but but actually we you, you, we ended up embracing quite a lot of that but we were sort of reluctant to go too stagey right off the bat we sort of try and take yeah. a, a, a sort of sideways approach and there are really musical theatre uh, tropes in there and um, stagey stuff but we took a more of an indie thing at first, you know. They start songs first, and then that, and then work goes in. But it's, it's it's so much fun when you're given like a character with a lot going on, yeah. And then someone says like, oh, you know, like uh, I want to leave my hometown or something. And there's this huge idea to go and write a song about, it, and then you try and put yourself in that place. And that's to us what was, has been addictive, and it's probably going to be very hard to go back from. Because we used to just sit, and I used to sit and stare at a wall and think of something to be sad about. And <laughs> um, now it's like here, here's this whole other, yeah, this huge story, you know, with big ideas, you know, and big, big character arc. Go and, go and put your head in that. It's it's weirdly liberating when you are given, you know, it doesn't sound like it would be. It sounds counterintuitive, but when you're given a story, you're given characters, and you're told you have to hit this emotional arc, or you have to push the narrative forward in this way. Um, suddenly, any notion of doing something for your own band in an indie sort of sphere, making it cool or whatever, is out the window because the minute you try and do that and you're not serving the story, there's no point. So we, we had this great experience where we felt free to explore different genres and to really kind of mess around with conventions and and to try and tell the story and that was the greatest lesson and that was one of the, the, the most yeah. fun aspects of it. And whip out all the jazz chords you're not allowed to use in, in like you <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. So some of the most popular musical songwriting writing going on now is between pairs like Pasek and Paul with Great yeah. Showman yes. and Lopez and Anderson for Frozen. Sure. What is it about two writers working together that <laughs> brings out I, that kind I, of work? I, I, very I, good I get question. it. I've learned, I, I think that I, I, I now see why people do it like that. Like for us, it was an accident. Like Rod, Rod got spoken to about the film and the short and given the script, and then he was like, I need to do it. You know, maybe well, it wasn't an accident because, the, you know, actually it felt like it was too much to take on for one person yeah, and that's probably lot. the answer is that you need someone to bounce ideas off you need someone to tell yeah. you you're not going crazy you need somebody to as a sounding board but somebody who gets us excited and it's about the chemistry and we were friends we were drinking buddies we 
had toured together, but it, we'd never written together, and it could have gone horribly, but it went really well. There was just something about the, the kind of chemistry in the room and what we both we both bring very, very different things to, to it, but the aim is always the same, which is to write the best thing and you, you can got, possibly write for the moment. And you cover a lot of stuff, and also, uh, yeah, and it was just like having a sort of, uh, it's, yeah, exactly, having a standard to hold the whole thing against is made easier by there being two, two minds across. And also when it comes to, when that tumbled into score in the film, doing all the underscore stuff, there's so much to keep in your head. This is all, every theme, every little twist, the narrative and through line and stuff, and just having, so the ball never gets dropped when there's more than one set of ears across it, you know? Yeah, we, I mean, we, we have a constant text stream between us about ideas and you, you have a, an element of working in the studio, but then walking away from it at night, and then, but you're, you're just still thinking about it so we would share things with each other constantly and ideas and demos and and it just you know you someone's got your back you got to the point now where you're sort of writing in your head which is bonkers because we, we, we sort of tumbled into finding ourselves doing more and more of this kind of thing and you yeah. just you're writing it in the shower you're writing it you're dreaming it you're um, <laughs> you writing it walking down the street so sort of come in and you'll be like it's, it should be this like i mean there's like one there's maybe one word missing from one of the songs in the film is a Christmas song in the middle it's like five songs in and there was one word missing that it always just not felt right and then we both came in on the same day and we're like this, this word's missing <laughs> and then we, was just, we we'd both come to the same conclusion at the same time but it had it, been like that for like three months there was one little word in the hook line just hadn't been there and we both came in on the same day we're like we need to put this word in well oh, I thought that too it's like okay, yeah. all right. because you're I think you're working, drive. You would drive yourself on, absolutely you'd drive yourself insane mad if it was own. just yeah. you. Because you've got no one to check if that, that, that was missing or not, you know, so little things. But also it's just bloody good fun. Yeah. I might be wrong about this, but Soldier at War, it felt like to me like a Queen song. Like a Queen no, you're not wrong, yeah. Was that a nod to Scotland? Um, no, I mean... Um, more just a, yeah, more a nod to like big 80s power yeah. ballad like that I, I guess there's a bit of status quo in there maybe for the Scots like um, a wee bit of that big like you know th- hot, well, hit, hot it heavy was, guitar it was rock. more it was more that we'd been asked to do something that was really over the top so we over had rock. that kind of power ballad um, 80s big nasty electric guitar thing going bloody, on like, and we had our you know so yeah, we were like, we're nodding to a lot of genres and a lot of types of moments. You know, this is a song called "Turning My Life Around," which has this jangly kind of Smiths esque kind of riff, but that also plays into a kind of Hall and Oates type moment where they're dancing down the street. And yeah, there's lots of these moments, but yeah, that's the kind of inspiration. And, and, that, and that's the joy of the gig now is like you're not writing; you can go and write a power pop. 80s rock ballad like I, I would never have got to do that in any other context than this so you, you can you get the finger tapping guitar out and all that stuff and all the things you just are not allowed to do normally uh, big big pedal note from the bass at the start piano octaves and things you just couldn't do normally so yeah. it's, it's, total, it's total musical freedom to be honest it's a joy